the, the Parents Guide to Reopening and Planning to Serve Educationally At-Risk Students. We are grateful that you can all be here and we will turn the time over to Ms. Michelle Whitney to deliver us this report. Thank you. So Board President Phillips, members of the board, it's my honor to be joined um, by some of my colleagues on the call tonight. I have two of my teammates who are gonna, going to help deliver the report. Uh, Dr. Jenny Rodriguez will be covering um, the information that's currently housed on our website as a guide to parents' return to school. And then Carla Lobos is going to walk us through the parent trainings that have been uh, curated and created to support our families in accessing our uh, virtual learning environment this year. So with that, I'll just turn it right over to Dr. Jenny Rodriguez. Well, thank you, uh, Board President Phillips, Superintendent Whitney, members of the board. I'm excited to be with you this evening. We have our behind the scenes uh, help, which is coming from Executive Director of Technology, Mark Garrett, who's gonna share his screen, I believe, so that we can take a look at the website together. So we're gonna just land on our homepage here for Pasco School District. And you'll see right at the top is this nice big banner that says back to school 2020. So for all of our families out there, if you just click that banner, it's gonna take you exactly where you want to go. So we're gonna walk through this page. You will notice there right at the top, it is available in Spanish. If you just click that red link, it actually will translate this entire page for you into Spanish. So we wanted um, families to be aware that that is available and it's available on every page of our website, but particularly for back to school information that we know um, parents and families are anxious to, to review. So we're really excited to be welcoming back our kids on Tuesday, although it's going to look a little different this year. And this page really has all of that information that you need to just get started with the year. So we're gonna walk through the left-hand side first, and then we'll come back up to the top and we'll scroll down the right-hand side. So on the left, the first piece you have is registration. If you are new to PASCO and you have not yet registered your child, we would be happy to support you and help you to do that. We want to get them into our school programs to start the year. So there's a link there where you can register um, along with information about what records you need and how to access those. If you were with PASCO School District as a student and family last year, then you're under the next section which says returning to PASCO where you just wanna go on and click to do your annual updates. Really important that we have all families do this. This helps us make sure that our PowerSchool parent portal is up to date, that we have your correct contact information, phone address and email, so that you don't miss any information that our buildings or our district is sending out to you. So we, we do that every year, so we still need you to do that this year. If you are um, have been enrolled at one of our campuses, but are planning to enroll in IPAL this year, there's information here on IPAL, the links to the other pages that describe the program, and it explains how to do your transfer over to the IPAL program if you would prefer that for this year. Continuing to scroll down, there's information about our PowerSchool accounts. Again, PowerSchool and Parent Portal is how, as a, as a parent or guardian, you can access your students' grades, attendance, email addresses, and contact information for all of your children's teachers. So it's really a great resource as a parent for keeping up to date on everything to do with school. We do want to make sure families are aware that attendance is going to be taken daily. It's gonna be taken during the synchronous session. So if your student for whatever reason is not able to log in at the time that is scheduled for their, for their school session, you will want to contact your school's attendance office just like we would have last year if, you're, if your child was unable to be at school for any reason. If you have a student who is still gonna complete the lessons, but they just need to do that on a flexible schedule or need further assistance in order to access our online lessons, then the attendance clerk at your building and your school principal will be happy to support you and work through that process. There's information on our focus for learning. So again, as we've heard in prior presentations, we're really focused on leading with social emotional learning and ensuring that your student has a safe and positive learning environment, even in this virtual world. So there will be time devoted next week by our teachers and our principals to really ensuring that folks feel connected and that we start to build those relationships and start our school year off on the right foot. For instruction, every grade level and course is aligned to our state standards. Um, we have identified priority standards for each content area or course and teachers are ensuring that students are gonna be focused on the most important learning 
as we move forward into the year and that they're prepared to move on to the next grade or course um, at the end of this year. We do wanna make sure that not just our parents and guardians, but also our students are aware that student work is going to be graded this fall. So your work will be monitored by your teachers. You'll get regular feedback from them to help you reach proficiency on those priority standards. You'll have projects, assignments, assessments, and tests, just like you always do at school. Um, that will all be happening and those will make up your grade. Students will get final grades at the end of each trimester um, for each of their courses. For elementary students, we are returning to our normal grading practices, including the use of our standards-based trimester report card. So parents, you'll get a, a report card just like you always do at the end of the trimester, which happens right after Thanksgiving this year. For secondary students, teachers are either using standards-based grading or traditional grading, and your final course grades are assigned using the standards-based grading or the traditional grade scale, like we typically have in the past as well. For school supplies, um, many of you I know already have a district laptop. We have several of our schools that are having laptop pickups throughout this week. So every student is getting a district laptop and also any necessary consumable curriculum materials like uh, workbooks and those types of things that they might need for the particular courses that they're enrolled in. But other than that, there's not really anything that you need in terms of school supplies. If you need assistance getting additional supplies that your student might need at home, if you reach out to your building principal, they will help you through that process to get your child what they need to be successful with school. When we do return to in-person, it is gonna be important that students have um, cloth mask or face shield for in-person instruction. It would be great to have a set of earbuds or headphones that they could use and also a backpack to carry their laptop. Your school can again assist you with those items if needed. For childcare, we do know that families are working through supervision issues and balancing work schedules and school schedules. So we do want to just make sure folks are aware. Boys and Girls Club of Benton Franklin Counties is continuing to provide childcare at their facilities and at existing elementary school locations. So if you are interested in that, you can contact Boys and Girls Club of Benton Franklin County. And if you're looking for other um, child care options. This child care where and that's a live link there that you can click has other options in our area that you can access. So that's just there is a resource if you're looking for other um, spots that you could go. For meals, we will be continuing uh, with our meal pickup options this fall. It will be available at every single one of our school sites. So whatever school um, you are closest to, you can go there for all of your school aged children to pick up their meals each day. They are welcome to attend at their boundary school, the school that they belong to, but they're also welcome to access the meals at any site that they need to. There's times listed here when those meal services are offered. Kids will come and do a pickup of lunch and breakfast, just like we did last spring. Um, and those will be available starting on Tuesday. We do really wanna encourage families to apply for free reduced meals if that's applicable um, or needed. And you can apply for that at any time during the school year applications are available from your school uh, nutrition services office and online as well and then you can see right there there's a link where you can apply it's again available in english and spanish and there's a phone number if you have questions on how to fill that out so we're going to scroll back up to the top of this page and i'm going to talk you through a couple more items and again this is just accessible on our psd webpage at the back to school information site so some fall virtual welcome opportunities. If you are attending one of our middle schools or high schools this fall as a new sixth, seventh or ninth grader, you get to say all three of those this year, there are virtual tours that you can access by clicking on the school's mascots and logos and you can check out all of their back to school um, for new student information. We're gonna scroll down a little bit. You've probably heard if you've been to our last couple of board meetings, we've talked about technology and core four learning programs. So again, students all have access to a district laptop. If you're not sure where to go to pick that up, if you contact your school, child's school, they will help you and let you know when you can come to the school to pick that up. There's some information about Microsoft 365 and what the student's My Apps window looks like. So that's just an example for you. And for at-home learning, we will be using our uh, core four applications and listed below, these are the four applications. The home base, which is where you go really for all of your assignments, communications, it's kind of the, the one-stop shop to get all the information that you need from your child's teachers. For grades K through five, 
they're using Class Dojo or Microsoft Teams. So for some of our um, older elementary students, teachers may be using Microsoft Teams. And for students in middle school and high school, we are using Microsoft Teams. We also have the OneDrive, which is work file storage, and that's not new. So for your student, they probably have used a OneDrive before, especially those that had a, a school laptop previously. For synchronous video, we'll be using Zoom, just like we are on this call. So it looks a lot like what you're seeing tonight. And for asynchronous video, so these would be videos, um, lessons potentially that teachers are posting for students to access, not during the live time that we're together, um, but after that at other times of day, they're using Screencast-O-Matic, Flipgrid, and Stream. So there's a nice little graphic there that just captures that same information. I've already mentioned how to get in touch with your school if you're not sure about how to get your laptop. Once you have your laptop, if you have any problems with it, you can contact our Pasco School District Help Desk. There's a phone number listed here and an email. I myself like to use the email. You never get the voicemail and they get it right away and you get right into the queue. So I highly recommend using the email for Help Desk and they will get back to you and help you with whatever you need to support your student being able to use their laptop. We also have parent online learning supports, and I'm not going to talk about that because my friend Carla Lobos is going to talk about that in just a few moments. If you need support with internet service, we are here to support families with connectivity and we have some information that your principals have. So if you need assistance with that, please contact your school's principal. For athletics clubs and activities, we absolutely are committed we know that kids that are involved are happier, healthier, and perform better academically. So your, your school's activities are starting up as much as they can if they can do that in a virtual environment. For athletics, we are a part of the Washington Interscholastic Activities Association, or what people usually refer to as WIAA, and we are following their guidance. So right now, they've already been very clear with us that we cannot have any athletics in our current phase 1.5. They've also done some moving of the high school sport season. So there is listed for you here how they have rescheduled those seasons. So really what they did is they took fall season and they wedged it between winter and spring season. So that's what that looks like there. For ASB fees and any other fees, those can all be paid online through our school pay system. That's the same way that you put money into your students' lunch account. So if you have questions about that or any fees are fine, again, please contact your child's school. They're gonna be able to run down the specifics for your student the quickest for you. Down below, there's a little bit of information about daily schedules. It does explain the difference between asynchronous learning, synchronous learning, and office hours because our schedules are made up really of those three building blocks for your students. We do have office hours um, slated hopefully to be every day so that parents and guardians can reach out to teachers as needed and be able to count on those times. This is a um, still tentative schedule and we are just working through the last questions that we need to address with our labor organizations and hope to have that finalized for you soon. We'll go ahead and scroll down past that. There is some information on this page for when in-person instruction resumes. I'm not gonna be going through the details of that today because we are gonna be starting in our virtual environment, but please know that there is information on this page. So when we are ready to do so, you can hop back on here and take a look at what those requirements will be when we get back to in-person instruction. For athletics, there is a little link there that if you do plan to participate in athletics, um, provided that we're able to do so this year, you do register through our Family ID platform and there's a link for each of our secondary schools that has athletics programs. You can go ahead and register your student through Family ID for athletics so that that's taken care of. So you can do that at that link there. And last but not least, volunteers are always um, there to support the success of our students. So if you are interested in volunteering, even in this virtual environment, we would encourage you to reach out to your neighborhood school to talk with them about opportunities. So with that, I am going to turn it over to my colleague, Executive Director of Curriculum and Professional Development, Carla Lobos. Just before we jump to Carla, I'd like to offer the board an opportunity to ask Jenny any questions before we go to Carla. So is there any questions for Jenny? Well, welcome, Board Phillips, Superintendent Whitney, member board. It's my pleasure to be with you this evening in this virtual setting. 
And Mark, uh, Executive Director Mark Garrett is going to navigate the webpage for us as I take you through the student and family resources. So as you can see, Mark clicked on the link, but it, there's also a link on the document, the front page that Dr. Rodriguez shared with you. So there's multiple ways for families to get to this portion of parental online learning supports. Now, before I go into and show you some of the resources that are available, I wanna preface this by thanking two ladies who have really been instrumental in developing this for us. And that is Enid Flynn and Brenda Akins. They've put in countless hours in customizing this and getting it up and running for us. So a big thank you and shout out to them. And I also wanna preface it with, to let you know that we are adding material and content to this daily. So one of the things that you will see in this, and we're gonna highlight as we get into this, a couple of videos that are custom that our staff has put together. We'll be expanding and adding videos in Spanish, for example, um, and others that they are preparing for us. So what you'll see is on this page is an overview of parental online learning supports. And if you can scroll down, Mark, and again, there's links. So if you need it translated into Spanish and there is a variety of resources from various organizations that are also on here for families that provide additional information, how to help their students at home and navigating the online learning platforms. One of the really cool things that both Brenda and Nina have put together is this suggestion box. And so when I met with them today, I asked them, I said, have you gotten any suggestions from staff or families? And they said, actually we have, we've had two. And so they've responded and been working with both those people and implementing some of the suggestions they had for the website. And so one of those suggestions was additional resources in Spanish, which is what we're currently working on as we're waiting to get some of those materials back from our translators. Um, and But the feedback has been very positive and, and people have been very gracious and supportive of the information that we have. So I'm gonna ask you, Mark, to go scroll back upstairs, up. As you can see the menu, you can have, it's all of the things that are available, core for, I know Dr. Rodriguez spoke to that. So this is for parents and families. So what we wanted to do and what we tried to do is really highlight what from a parent's perspective and a student perspective, how can we support them if they need additional support in navigating these various pieces. So Mark, I'm gonna ask you to click on my apps. So instead of explaining to you what my apps is, we're gonna actually watch Enid's video that she put together. So this is one of two videos and we have additional that we'll be posting by the end of the week, not only in Spanish, but to other videos that support our families and students in the various components that are listed in the menu on your left. But we're gonna watch Enid's video just to give you a flavor of uh, the quality of work and what the resources are that are available to our families. So if you could play Mark. Hello Pasco families, my name is Enid Flynn and welcome to What is My Apps and Where Do I Find It? My Apps is a collection of frequently used educational and instructional platforms or applications as we call them, curated and brought together in one place for easy access for students and families. There are three ways that we are able to access My Apps and I will demonstrate those for you now. So. The first way is through this, the district student issue device. When a student logs in to their computer, My Apps populates on their desktop, and by double clicking on the icon, it automatically links their My Apps to their login information from the computer. You can see here in the right hand corner, Samuel is our test student, and these are the applications that are applicable for his grade level. If you are not using a Pasco School District issue device, that's okay. If you click on a browser and type in the following URL, psd1.helloid.com, you will see that um, my apps populate with the very same applications that Samuel has associated to him. Now, the first time you do this, you will be prompted to enter in the username and password, which is the same for the student device, but that's okay. Once you do it, it will remember. The other method is to access my apps through our Pascal School District website. You click here, which is also the hub for all sorts of other information and important details. So when you come up to the top banner, you will see students and families and toggle down to My Apps Login. And again, this remembers because I have logged in here before, but you will be prompted the first time to enter in the username and password for your child, which will then associate them 
and all their applications will occur. So that is how you access my apps. Please look for our next video called I'm in my apps. Now, what are all of these applications and what do they do? Until then, thank you for your time. And remember, together we are PASCO. Thank you, Mark. So this is one example of the various videos. Currently we have two and we will be posting additional videos for the menu that you see on the left. So Mark, I'm gonna ask you to scroll up. And again, those will be available in Spanish and in English as well. So core four, what families will have, will have the opportunity, again, it's information for them to help them understand what each of those are. So for example, if you go to, go ahead and click on core four, Mark. It's the similar graphic that Dr. Rodriguez showed you. And it also, so for example, it delineates for parents that Screencast-O-Matic, for example, is what teachers will be using, but students will be using Flipgrid and Microsoft Stream for their videos. So there is tutorials on there for students to use as well, along with all the suite of Microsoft Office um, resources for them, 365, like Class Notebook, Forms, Outlook, PowerPoint, Sway, and Word documents. So there's all of these that parents will be able to navigate. Again, they're available in English and in Spanish. So on any of your spare time that you have, or if you can't sleep in the evening, feel free to navigate through all of these resources. And we will be updating these daily as the videos become are finalized um, in our small production studios of Pasco School District. So we have questions for Carla. Um, I do have a question. Can we access this information through the ESD1 app as well? I don't know if we can right now. That would probably be a good question for um, Mark and Shane, but I, I bet that's something that they they could probably figure out how to do. So just to point out, this is for the parents, but there, if, if you're a staff member, there is a similar menu with training modules for all of the core four that we've also provided for staff when they sign in that they can also take. But this one is specifically catered to our families and our students. I have a question. Thank you, Dr. Rodriguez and Ms. Lobos. I'm, I'm not sure this might be one for Dr. Rodriguez, or maybe for Miss Whitney, um, this is pretty overwhelming. I'm, I'm a parent. I'm familiar with computer programs. There's a lot here. So I'm going to have a kid in elementary school, middle school, and high school. Multiple families have kids at different in different grade levels. If there was one thing that they were going to do on on the first day, you know, go and log into your Zoom meeting at the start of your school day. Is there instructions on how to do that? Is the Zoom invite gonna come through email? Is the Zoom invite, they just open the app and it automatically says log in to this one meeting. But if there's one thing, how do they know where to go log in on at the first day? Is that in a spot on that first page that Dr. Rodriguez showed us? I believe it will be posted in their Teams account. So for our middle school and high school kids, for each course, they're associated to the teacher in a team group. And that's where everything will get posted for the class, including the links for Zoom meetings. For our elementary students who are using Class Dojo, I believe they would push it out that way as well. Um, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna just open it up if Ms. Lobos has any additional information to share. That information should be coming out from the school. And I think Mrs. Sparks is on here too, um, who can support with at least from the elementary perspective, but that should be coming out from the schools as to, and probably you're correct through Class Dojo, depending on the grade level of the student or teams in terms of how to access like the first day's instruction and, and those kind of things with the teachers. Those kind of instructions can get lost in emails or maybe they come through the app, but it, I. I feel like it would be maybe ease some concerns of parents 
if on that main web page there you have if you're in, in elementary school here's the one thing you're going to do at 8 or 9 a.m on tuesday morning you're going to hit this app and you're going to do this if you're in middle school you're going to hit this app and you're going to do that because otherwise i think we're going to have a lot of people missing out on information if it's coming individually from the schools. so a one-stop shop for the one thing you should do on the first day I think would help us have better attendance and better connectivity on that first day. Other comments or questions, suggestions for Carla? Um, Jenny obviously supervises our secondaries. Susan will supervise our elementaries. Carla is all things instructional curriculum PD. Um, so these are your folks to give feedback to that could help drive some of those suggestions forward. So. Yeah. Oh, good good Sorry. Yeah, I would like to piggyback with Mr. Lerman uh, as far as the the, I'm concerned because oftentimes our our parents, um, Spanish-speaking parents or any minority parents, um, English is very hard or technology is very too hard to understand. So um, more s s simplified way of doing it, the better, I believe. Um, I, you know, <laughs> I can imagine my grandmother and my mother are trying to go through this and they're like, oh, I'll do whatever. And then it's going to be uh, some kind of chaotic thing. And the and then there's no accountability of the, of, the, of the student actually doing it because the parents don't know how to do it. So uh, I, I'm, I'm a little bit worried as far as the technology is, is concerned and the understanding on how to do that. So it, it, whether I know there's a help desk or whatnot, but is there going to be somebody available on hand to help uh, answer questions for those families that really don't understand that? Just I, if I can speak to that just real quick, this is Susan Spark. So most of our families are accustomed to using Class Dojo. They used it last spring. And I do know that at the elementary level, the teachers are reaching out and providing that information to our families. We're also planning on using the first week of school as our connect with our families. So those first four days, that is what the teachers will be doing. That's the plan right now so that they can make sure families are connected and have all of the information that they need to be able to get on. Thank you for that. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. And if I could add to that too, one of the things and one of the reasons that we've been working with Jeff Utick, who is a leader in online instruction in supporting our staff, and he's going to be launching his three-day support for our teachers tomorrow for each of the tier days and one of the reasons that we've reached out and partnered with him is because he emphasizes so all of those concerns that you're sharing are very valid concerns and what he talks about is really those first few weeks what teachers do is that they're teaching kids how to access those apps so so you're absolutely right it can be very overwhelming and so just like a teacher teaches the instruction this is now these technology tools and the apps are some of the instruction that they're going to be taking their kids through and teaching them how to access. So we certainly don't expect kids to know the very first day, but that will be part of the instruction. And so the expectation will be that schools will be reaching out and communicating, whether it's via Teams or Class Dojo of kind of where to log on. But as teachers begin their relationships with students, they will be teaching them slowly how to access not only just the My Apps, but the various components of Microsoft Office that is appropriate for their grade level. So that will be part of the instruction that they're providing also. I'd like to, go ahead, Steve. It, if I could just add one thing before we leave that student support piece, I just also wanted to remind um, the board about um, information that was shared in a study session around, you know, teachers are going to do their part to engage with kids and families if we still are having issues in connecting and engaging with families we have our home visitors our intervention staff our counselors as part of what i call care teams that are ready also to wrap around our families and meet them where they are and give them what they need in order to be able to fully engage so there's layers of people 
in partnership with the teachers to make sure that that 100 percent of our kids are engaging and it, that if there's barriers like access to internet access to the computer computer knowledge and awareness of how to navigate the apps that we can help as a team eliminate that um, so it's not solely on the teacher there's a network of support at the building level who's gone through the focus group process and has built some clarity around their role and where they're they're going to plug in to help and support so um, i didn't want to lose that part of the system that we've built to make sure that people are getting what they need to be able to fully engage i do appreciate the feedback around if i'm a parent what do i do on eight o'clock on the first day of school i think that's um, absolutely a loop we can close and, and make sure that every parent knows and understands exactly what to do on the first day of school so steve i'm sorry i interrupted you yeah, I was just wondering if these things are available now that they could start using them now in some way. I don't whether to communicate with the principal. I don't know if teachers are in their classrooms yet, but but uh, some way that they can start using those now so that on the first day of school they they have a little bit of understanding of how to use them. I know they've used them before in some cases they have. Um, so on a different subject, I don't know if anybody's got something along these same lines. I have another one along this same line. Is there, is there an effort going to be made? I understand all, there's a lot of effort gone into the web page and communications in different ways, but are teachers or anybody from the building going to in the next, what, four work days before school starts, personally contact the parents via phone if they can and say, here's what your kid's going to do. They're going to log on to Zoom. Do you know how to help them do that? Is your, do you have a computer? Um, is there anybody going to make that contact before the first day? Or are we just going to roll out the first day and then make contact with those who miss out after that? I think that would help a lot, but I don't know what kind of resources we have or if individual teachers can do that or other people from the buildings. But I think that would be very valuable because uh, maybe my wife's been getting the communications. Maybe I've missed it via email or the app. But I'm not sure if my kids ask me if school is starting tomorrow, I could tell each of them at the three different grade levels what they're going to do the next day. And I don't believe they know yet. I think that, that personal contact, if possible, would ease a lot of apprehension, especially two of them are going to the middle school for the first year and to the high school for the first year. So in addition to just back to school, it's a new, it's a transition per se, it's a different transition, but there's even additional apprehension there. And if, if a teacher, somebody contacted him and told him, here's what you're gonna do, I think that ease a lot of it. Jenny, yeah, go ahead, Jenny. Thank you for the comments, Mr. Lerman. I We will be working with principals. They are continuing daily to push out additional communications to the students that attend their school. In terms of an individual phone call, I, I don't know that that will be done prior to Tuesday. Um, all of our teachers are in training for the next three days, really gearing up to be prepared for uh, school starting. Um, and and at, we do have like at our middle schools they are having face-to-face -face computer pickups every evening pretty much this week i know those times and days have been sent out and a lot of people showed up last night um, at our middle schools. so i would certainly encourage you if you have questions um, they're there during those pickup times and there's staff there that could assist we do have all of our offices are manned uh, with our secretaries our administrators are um, in trainings but also available and returning phone calls daily so if anyone has questions or concerns, I would just really encourage you to call your school directly and they would be able to give you the best information about what that first day will look like for their school. So maybe if we don't have time to, another option, I'm just throwing ideas out here. If we don't have time to contact them individually, I know that people can go contact their principal directly. If they hear us talking about this, it doesn't look like we have very many external callers on this call right now but maybe something that could be second best would be like a robo call that says um your students attending xyz middle school you know uh here's what they should do on the first day to 
to figure out what that is, go to the website and click, you know, first day of middle school or first day of elementary school or first day of high school so that that information that you put on the website, they're being told directly. Because if I get that robocall, I'm, I'm going to go click on it. If I wasn't on the school board and didn't know what was going on here, I don't know that I would have picked up all that information that's on the uh, web page right now. But maybe it, if we can't do individual contacts, maybe a robocall with directions to go hit on one link for what you do on the first day, depending on your grade level, may help. And then one last thing before we go on to the next topic, I think um, we get back to school reports all the time. And I think this information, um, how many students connect on the first day, the second day, the third day, the fourth day, is maybe not such valuable information for the board, but for administration and teachers to figure out where those gaps are. Because if on the first day we get 20% of the kids connecting to the first class, there's a lot of work that the teachers need to do to go individually help them and we may be able to evaluate and move forward um, at a faster rate if we collect that data. So thank you for both of those suggestions, Scott. I think the, the big thing for us that's different in the fall than in the spring is that it's mandatory that we take attendance. And then we've thought about proactively how we engage the intervention and support staff in our counselors, our behavior intervention specialist, our student achievement specialists, our, our BISs, CISs, SASs, all the different layers of support that we have in our schools around, again, developing that multi-layered network of how do we continue to support until we've contacted 100%. So um, I appreciate the, the suggestion about the robocall and, and um, your acknowledgement that us monitoring that data of who's engaging and what do we need to do to get to 100% engagement is really important. Yes, I appreciate a lot of those comments too. Um, as a parent, you know, what do we do on the first day? Where do we go? I think that was a great question. And, and as well as, um, yeah, anyway. Um, so one of the things that I, I've been trying to follow along on my phone, just so that I as a parent can do it. I've actually looked at some of these things beforehand but I got hung up on trying to find the student re the student online resources. Um, I went to student family resources. That was the first one. It seems like this would be a resource. And then I see parent online learning supports. I don't know if we could put another button under student family resources because really this parent support is also another family resource. And so it took me a while to figure out where we were and, and how to get to that. Or maybe a button online. Um, I think that's the hardest part. There's so many pieces and trying to get out in front of us what we need right now. I'm, I'm not an expert, so I don't know if there's a way to do that. So I guess I'm putting that question. Is there a way to make this more accessible and easy? Maybe on the parent app, you can have a button for you know online supports. Um, but I couldn't find anything on the parent app, um, but there might be and I'm just missing it. So I don't know, somehow, yeah, I would love to see it. There's so many good information, so much good information. I looked at some of the videos, they were incredible. I wanna make sure that they're accessible to our families, especially I'm not the most um, um, tech savvy and I know there's a lot that aren't as tech savvy as I am. So I wanna make this as easy as possible to help our parent, parents out. So if we can keep that in mind, that would be great. Thank you for that feedback, Amy. We'll work with Shane to see what options we have to make it more transparent where to go for the support. Steve, I think you've been trying to jump in uh, a number of times, so I wanted to make sure that you had your opportunity. Yeah, so I, you partially addressed it. I think I just want to express my concern about the attendance. Uh, I don't have any kids in school, so I don't, I'm not getting any of the messages, but it, if uh, attendance is going to be taken this starting this fall than like last spring and so but uh, you've talked about uh, we'll see what happens on the first day and then after that we'll send out some resources to to let people know but i think that's going to be critical that people know that and i i know when i had kids in school it's been several years ago now that if one of my kids missed we would get a phone call i don't know if that same thing is going to happen this time I, I don't know how it works now but anyway just letting people know that hey your student wasn't in school and especially if it's an online thing instead of sending them to school i, I just think it's going to be critical that we 
track that and have a way of, of making sure parents are aware. Thank you for that. I do have a couple of slides I want to share um, before our time is up. We have about 20 minutes, so I just want to be mindful of that. My, my slides won't take very long, but is there any other last comments for Dr. Rodriguez, uh, Mrs. Sparks, or Mrs. Lobos? Thank you for this incredible work. I think that you guys have done incredible things here. I'm hoping it will really help our families be able to navigate this system better. So thank you for all the work that you put into this. So the piece that I had to share tonight is really around just a very, very brief update on um, the work being done to prepare to serve our educationally at risk students as a uh, just by way of reminder for the board, the um, reopening guidance from OSPI suggested that schools prioritize in-person services for students with the greatest need, particularly students with disabilities, um, as our health regulations allowed. Our Ben Franklin County or Ben Franklin Health Department provided those regulations through some guidance to us as local school districts. So while they recommended that we remain closed to in-person instruction, there was an allowance made in that guidance to allow for in-person services for what was termed in the recommendation educationally at risk students in groups of five or fewer. So when you think about the umbrella of educationally at risk students, that umbrella is pretty broad reaching. Um, our intent is to start a phased in process for serving students determined as educationally at risk based on priorities identified through the reopening planning process. The first step will be to serve students who receive special education services in our self contained program. And there's a there's some processes that we're kind of working simultaneously. So simultaneously to while we are engaging around this planning process for our special education students who are in our self-contained programs, we are also working to identify how will we in Pasco School District define that more broader definition of educationally at-risk students. So these, these two things are kind of happening simultaneously. So we are planning um, towards starting in-person services for students who receive special education services in our full day special education self-contained programs. So as we speak, things like communication of families is occurring. We are collaborating with our labor partners and staff around what is that process of bringing staff back to serve small groups look like. We're developing schedules for those on-site services for our special education students who take advantage of those self-contained programs. And then we need to coordinate with our health, um, our, our nurses around any of our um, students who have life threatening conditions or health conditions that require us to do some planning beyond regular planning for students to come back. And then with this layered health planning with COVID on top of that, there's a real need to coordinate with our school nurses also do planning with nutrition services. Some of our students in our special education programs, especially in our self contained require some uh, additional supports and accommodations around nutrition and then transportation services. So those that coordination is happening around our special education students who are currently being served by full day programs or self contained programs. So if you're a, a family of a student like that, if you haven't already received, you will be receiving communication from our special education department and um, our employee services department is working again with our labor partners and our staff to get those classroom staff to start to bring those students back. If you remember a number, it feels like years ago, but I think it was just a couple meetings ago where I talked to you about this concept of being very thoughtful and intentional and methodical about the way we bring people back to our campuses. So while we all feel this urgency to get people back as many people as we possibly can in these small groups of five as quickly as we can, we want to make sure the systems and structures are built out to support their health needs, their educational needs, um, their nutrition needs, and that our staff are, are safe while, these, while we're educating students on campus. So while we're targeting to do that as soon as possible, we also want to make sure that we're being very thoughtful and intentional and that all those processes and protocols are in place. So there's been a lot of work done to get that up and running and, and we'll be very thoughtful about getting that done as quickly as we can. 
while we're doing that, we are also engaging stakeholders around identifying this broader, this broader umbrella of educationally at-risk students. So a decision metric is being identified for additional groups of students based on educationally at-risk categories, and that's being developed right now. Um, we will be giving you an update on September 8th about that work. There's a springboard proposal that's being worked on. Um, we will be able to provide you an update on the 8th um, to get feedback on that springboard proposal of where we are with defining educationally at-risk students beyond um, the special education students that we're starting with. And then based on that feedback that we get from you, we then are holding a community focus group on the 9th of September. Immediately following that, then we'll work through a process then to start bringing back those other groups of students based on that work. So certainly we all are feeling urgency around getting students in-person services. We also just wanna be very thoughtful and intentional about making sure we have all of the right processes and protocols in place to keep students and staff safe while we're doing it. So um, I am happy to answer any questions that I can about that, but I did wanna give you a brief update about where we are in that process. I thought for a minute that my mic was muted, <laughs> but I thought, well, no, someone would have said something, right? <laughs> Any questions from the board about our special education and serving them? All right, do you, is that, do you want to continue? I'm super No, that's what we had prepared for you tonight. Absent any other questions or comments from the board. Hey, any comments from our students? Um, how you feel about this? Any questions that you have? This is your senior year. Any anything you want to add or any questions you have? I wouldn't say there's any questions, but we're just really thankful that we're still being able to have this opportunity to go online as best as we can through our education. So thank you for that. <laughs> I just wanna add um, and say thank you again. And as far as um, our school and you know, it's our senior year. So we're really looking forward to working with our ASB and our leadership to create some virtual plans. And I know our link crew is working on a virtual uh, freshman orientation with our virtual tour and everything to make sure our freshmen have all the information they need. Yeah, and a lot of the students um, at my school are really excited to get back to school and just kind of do something new this year. I think that while this isn't exactly what we all like planned on doing, this is going to be something different and I think it will be kind of cool. Well, thank you. Thank you for your comments. Thank you, um, district staff, for all that you have done, all of the trainings. I really love those videos that um, I found online. They, they were so informational. Um, so I am, I'm hoping that our parents can really utilize some of these tools that we have, that you have provided for, for them. Um, so if there are not any more questions or comments from the board, then we will adjourn this meeting and we will meet again at 6.30 for the official, the regular um, board meeting. Thank you.